Hello everyone, it's Susan here. I've created this uh, sh this little video um, to show you how I'm making this little seahorse. Um, I had some comments on some whales and a turtle I made, so uh, I thought I would show you the same process here, but using a seahorse. I am using tracing paper. I found a free image on the internet, so all you need to do is Google Seahorse Silhouette and pick the one that you like or any little creature that you want to do. Um, so I've just uh, stuck that on. I don't need to go crazy with tape, just, just enough so it doesn't shift around. And I've got a pointy stylus here is my preferred method. Some people will use a pen or a pencil, but um, I don't really need to see that marking on, on my image here. So, uh, my goodness, I am apologizing if you do hear a fan in the background or some white noise. Uh, it is really warm here where I live right now. Actually, it seems to be like this in many places in the world right now. Uh, we're all sweltering at the end of July here. But I hope you're having a good summer and uh, getting out in the, the nice weather anyway. Okay, so I'm just going to let you watch this and I'll come back in just a sec. Well, that was really quick just because my mind is thinking of other things here. Um, with respect to the image, you don't have to do tracing. If you're very good with freehand drawing, uh, make your own image. Um, I just, uh, for this, I felt it would be easy to do it this way so you could have options. If you're not good at freehand, uh, I find even tracing things, my hand is not all that steady at times. And uh, also with the, the surface of the rock underneath or whatever you're, you're drawing on can also create little bumps as you go along here. But... Um, for the most part, this is a very, very easy method for all levels of uh, painters. So, let's see here. Just remember to put the right side of, on the tra tracing paper onto the rock. Um, it seems obvious, but <laughs> it's, uh, it's happened before to some people. So, Okay, so there you go. That's, that part's pretty easy. Now, I am using Posca pens here. These are acrylic paint pens. You can use black paint. Um, I find for what I'm going to be doing after this, um, I prefer the, the paint pen. See, I already went out of the lines. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, the paint pen, only my biggest reason is because when it dries, it's completely flat. There's no bumps and ridges that you might get from a brush, um, you, you know, using regular paint. So, uh, and I prefer Posca because it, it dries matte as well. Some paint pens will have a bit of a shine to them. Uh, like Thule Art has a bit of a shine. Um, I find for the processes that follow this, um, I prefer a matte uh, background for the foil glues uh, to adhere to better. Uh, it's just experience and, and my pref preference. So, uh, and you know, thinking about that, the only reason it's my preference is because I've tried all kinds of things. So, you know, go and experiment, learn some things, make some mistakes, uh, and just, you know, have fun with it. So, I'm my voice might be a little more nasally than usual it's this time just recovering from the dreaded covid and i've got a little bit of lingering dry throat but uh, i am all through it thankfully and uh, i hope everybody's managed to stay away from it you know i i'm frustrated because i did everything i was supposed to do got all my vaccines and i still got sick and happily gave it to my husband <laughs> No, that's not fair. Uh, okay, back to this. 
so uh, I used the fine lining one for the initial part and now I'm just using the the wider tipped one just to to get more paint on there easier Now for this part, I've decided I wanted to embellish my little seahorse even further uh, just by putting some, uh, dotting some black paint <clears throat> on, on the little spikies I made. Um, if you search um, real images of seahorses, you'll see they are incredibly diverse. Uh, there's so many different colors and shapes and, um, you know, uh, some are fancier than others so you can really create your own magical little creation here um, and just have fun with it now here is where I'm going to sort of uh, pencil in uh, where I want to put um, my foils and um, putting in design into the body uh, sort of making it up here as I go along. Um, I'm just using a watercolor pencil. Uh, it's easiest um, I find for this. I find the chalk pencils leave a little bit too much residue. Um, this doesn't interact with anything. For this um, video, <clears throat> I decided I would show you how I use nail powders as well. Um, my other little creations that I've made recently were uh, that people were commenting on uh, my orca and turtles. I only used foils, um, but for this one I wanted to show you um, that you can do this with na nail powders to create neat metallic shine in your your creations and it's very very easy to do. Um, <clears throat> I have put some links in the video description of one kit of nail powders but my goodness there's just so many um, available on the market um, that you really just need to to do some searching and see what what looks nice. Uh, you want something that's powdery not glittery um, and the glitter doesn't adhere to the um, top coat that I'll be using very well. So you want a very soft, powdery um, type of um, nail powder. <laughs> Seems obvious, but there is so many. And if you do happen to get the wrong kind, I'm sure you'll be able to use it in one way or another. But uh, you'll see later on here the type of powder I'm using. And I'm also going to show you... Um, I put a link to some foils. It's just a starter kit. Um, but again, there is just gazillions of different foils on the market that you can get. Um, I have a massive collection. And I get um, some from uh, Amazon. 
or AliExpress. I got some from my friend Wanda, uh, the Foiling Rock Lady, and I'll try to remember to put a link to her um, YouTube channel as well because she really is the master of uh, foiling and all kinds of mixed media type stuff. Um, that's really her area of expertise. So I'm definitely, if I can remember to put it in the video description in there as well. So that's Wanda. Um, I, I love to do this kind of art, um, but I certainly, um, I don't feel, uh, as confident in doing tutorials and stuff for you as, um, as there's so many other great artists that, that do this much more than I do. Um, as you know, I like to do my mandalas and I've got that down pretty confidently. Um, so here I'm using a gel pen and, um, I'm using the gel pen just because it's, I find it's nice and fine. Uh, it gives a nice gold color. Uh, if you have gold paint that you're really good at br with a brush, uh, or, you know, a, a, a paint pen like Posca, uh, you can do the same here. Um, I, I do struggle trying to find the perfect gold pen, I have to be honest. And uh, I think my, my next trip into town, I'll go and visit the professional paint store and, or paint supply store and see if I can find another gold one to try. But this is just a regular uh, uni gel. You can get these at Michael's quite easily. And, you know, they, they don't fail me, so they just run out. <laughs> I usually will run over the lines a couple of times to get it a little thicker and more opaque. Um, sometimes they can get a little thin in spots. And uh, I will, you know, definitely be fixing things up, adding more black, taking out ones I don't like. You know how it goes. <laughs> um, <clears throat> shortly here I'll be showing you a, f a funny little cactus um, pen. And it's, it's a gel pen. It's a, I think it's a 0 0.5 millimeter um, black pen. I found them on AliExpress. I do think Wanda's Etsy store also carries similar ones. And she's got all kinds of foils in there too. So I'll try and um, link that in the video description as well. Um, that's Wanda the Foiling Rock Lady Etsy shop. Great stuff in there. She's also got lots of great paints. Uh, okay, so I'm losing my voice, so I'll just let you watch this for a minute, and I'll come back. Just going to mention, once you've finished all your lining like this, um, take it in or outside and give it a quick spray before you move on to the next step. Okay, here you can see I've added the little black line. I didn't think you needed to see that. Okay, <clears throat> so here we are. Here is the top coat. Uh, any, you know, good brand of top coat will work for this, and it's UV activated. I like to pour a little bit into a dish here, um, and I use little disposable, um, paint um, little brushes um, for the you know I find it it's easier for the small little areas uh, I think I have got a bag here yeah so this comes in bags of you know 50 100 and uh, so the top coat um, you know, I'm just going to paint it on into the area that I want it <clears throat> you don't want it too thick and you don't want it too thin, so you, you want a nice even coat and it shouldn't have any ripples or anything in it, uh, as you'll see here shortly.
Okay, this is going to go into my um, UV lamp, the one I use uh, for also curing um, resin. So it'll go in there for about 30 seconds, and there you can see it's dry. And here is the blue powder I'm putting on. Uh, it's nice and fine, and uh, you can see it transfers on there really nicely. I suggest uh, getting some old rock um, and prepping it with black, and use it as a test test rock to see you know how things are go you know how they'll respond. Um, yeah, so what I'm doing here is I'm just moving on to with different colors. Um, I don't expect anybody to do this uh, little seahorse exactly as mine. Um, because we all have different supplies and different things and, you know, just expand your creativity and, and make it, make it your own. But I'm just really wanting to show you the technique on how, how I'm making these, because uh, they're so fun to make. There, okay, that's dry. And so this, uh, this is the next one. This is more of a flaky, uh, type powder and it doesn't really stick to my little sponge applicator all that great, but. It's better than putting it on my fingers and getting glitter everywhere. As you can see, I have a paper towel underneath this now because it just goes everywhere. Uh, but yeah, it sticks on really nice. These um, more flake type, they sometimes call them a chameleon powder or chameleon flakes. Um, they will have a bit of a color change to them. Uh, you'll really see that when I resin how that comes out really, really beautiful. I'll just brush that off and then I'll hold it up here and you can see it just goes from like green to gold, even a bit of uh, magenta in there. It's just, I love these things. Later on, you could choose to um, put crystals on these little spikes uh, instead of uh, chrome powder, um, but I uh, thought I would chrome these up with the powder.
Okay, on to the next part. So you're going to put away your big UV lamp and we're just going to use this little torch here. Uh, or you can use the mouse style of uh, UV light. Uh, they're just a lower wattage. Uh, so it's not going to cause your foil glue to wrinkle up uh, because it's too hot. It's it's just a nice, I, I really like it. It's my, my go-to for foils. I've gathered a few foils here. I'm not sure uh, at this point uh, which ones I was going to use. Um, but I was just kind of looking at the colors and pattern. Um, and so, you know, it's... You know, I like to lay things out and see, okay, is this kind of the direction I want? I didn't end up using this one because it just had too much of a large pattern that I, I felt just wasn't going to come through uh, with the look. This is probably one of my favorite ones. Um, I got this from Wanda. And it's because it's got so many neat colors and sort of little designs in there. Uh, this one is a kit. This is probably one of the most common kits you can get with the starter kits, um, and, as well as this one. These are these are really really great. So there's the foil glue. It has to be UV foil glue. Um, don't try to use any other glue. It will not work for you. And again, I like to pour it into my little tray. And uh, as you can see there, I've got some scissors. Uh, sometimes I use a round, the round end of a stylus if I've got some stubborn spots. Uh, I use uh, another disposable brush. You can clean these with some alcohol afterwards if you um, want to reuse it again. And I use Q-tips because they're nice and soft for transferring the foil, um, the foil papers. You could also use a silicone tipped end as well, um, but I find just the Q-tips are, are just as easy. You can sort of see me thinking about where I'm going to apply this. Uh, so I'm going to do it in sort of sections. Um, like when I did my little turtle, I wanted all the cells on the turtle's back to kind of all be a bit different, so I kind of did one or two at a time. Um, this section on the seahorse, I'm going to use the same foil for this whole sort of front part. So I'm going to put the, all the foil on all the segments. Um, the, the trick with foil, or one of the tricks, there's lots, lots that you'll learn as you go along, is to not put it on too thick. I can like the top coat and not too thin. Um, if it's too thick, it will sort of bubble and ripple a little bit and then you won't get an, a nice smooth uh, transfer. You can take it off really easy just um, with a stylus. You can kind of just scrape it off and start over. Um, so it's better to go on the, the thinner side. Um, it does have a tendency to retract a little bit from like the gold lines there. So sometimes I might go on to the gold line just so that it, it gets right to the edge. Um, but y you know all these kind of things you learn as you go how it behaves. It behaved very well today and I think a lot has to do with um, the temperature being nice and warm. Uh, like many products like UV resin uh, they do like a warmer environment. If it's cold, they, they tend to act uh, act up a little bit. At least that's what I find. Um, I don't know about you guys, um, what your experience is with uh, nail products and uh, things like resin. Uh, so I'm just taking my time here and getting nice clean lines or, you know, not trying going over the lines. Um, but there's definitely lots of opportunity to clean things up if you happen to go, you know, if the, the foil goes over the edge, you can just go over it with your, your pen, um, clean up part at the end.
Okay, here's my light. I don't like to hold it in one place uh, for any length of time, so I'm moving it a lot. And that's just so that it, it takes its gentle time curing initially. Um, I don't like to shock it. <laughs> um, if I use a little mouse, I find it's getting too much right all at the beginning. So I just, this is why I like this little torch so much. I can, can control it a little bit more so I don't get the ripples in my, um, in the glue. And so you can see it's, it's all nice and smooth, no ripples. Um, uh, it's pretty much cured right now. Some foils you have to watch for, they'll have a seam along the edge there that isn't part of the pattern. And sometimes it's a clear, a little bit of clearness on the edge. So you'll want to cut that off before you use it. Um, just thought I would show that. I'm just trying to figure out where I want the color. And there's a bit of a yellow strip through this one and I wanted it kind of in the center of his belly. So there we go. You can cut those ahead of time, but <laughs> I was just lazy. So there, I'm just rubbing the Q-tip in. It's nice and smooth, so it's not going to scratch the foil. That's why I like Q-tips. And then if you just gently lift the edge, you can see if anything has not transferred. And just go back in with your Q-tip if something is, you know, you've got a little hole or a line isn't all that clear. So I'll take the round end of my stylus and go over the the edge there got the wrong end there it's just a little more aggressive way of transferring a stubborn foil but you'll learn some tricks as you go along I don't know what was wrong with this spot. It was still a little bit sticky, so I'm just curing it over top of the foil, and sometimes that helps. <laughs> I say sometimes. <laughs> So I'm just skipping ahead. Uh, you saw the process. I don't need to show them all to you. Uh, this is one of those foils that's sort of like an oil slick. Uh, I thought it was really pretty. These transfer really, really nicely. Uh, but not all foils are created equally. I must say that. Some transfer on like butter, just beautiful like that. Look at that. Oh, love it. And some require a little bit more work, like the very first one I showed you there. Um, but so far I'm loving this and here we go look tops all done love it so next I will just go in and clean up any little areas that um, need some cleaning up and then it goes in for some resin which I'll show you as well here
Okay, I like to start with the back of my art first. And this is the uh, resin that I use. Uh, don't waste your money on anything else, to be honest with you. <clears throat> just from my own trial and error, I've spent a lot of money and they just wouldn't cure. I have put links to these in my video description down below. Um, while you're down there checking that out, subscribe to my channel. It'll help keep me going. Um, I uh, do appreciate all the comments that everybody makes as well. It helps uh, motivate me. Uh, I'm certainly not producing as many as I have, but uh, life is just busy right now. So I've got some little silicone um, discs here uh, or you can use anything just to raise your rock up so that when the lights uh, they can hit the side a little bit better remember to wear gloves well ventilated area um, and uh, even a respirator uh, because it does create a vapor um, it's not a VOC but it is a vapor it can cause some people some uh, issues. Uh, some people have allergies. So just, you know, common sense, I hate to say it, personal protective equipment. And, uh, you know, I'm just using my finger here. Don't need to use anything fancy like a brush, <laughs> honestly. Uh, <clears throat> nice even coat. I have a torch there, which I will uh, go over the rock with to blow out any little bubbles on the surface. Uh, I've been using that same torch for several, several years, so they're, you know, they last, they work really well, and, uh, <clears throat> and so I get the sides. I keep going over the sides just so that it doesn't create a uh, drip, because um, it is resin, it's, it's going to cure really fast and it'll be hard. I don't want drip marks, so I'm just making sure it's not dripping down the side. It's very, very warm today, so the resin is very runny. <clears throat> so I want to work quickly, um, but I don't want to take any shortcuts here, so make it nice. Uh, so for UV resin, I like to do two cycles. Uh, <clears throat> I think that's a 90 second cycle, uh, just to give it a really good cure. Then I flip it and do the same on this side. Oh yes, I'm going to put a little crystal for his eye. Forgot about that. This has a wax tip and a metal tip. So I pick up the crystal. Uh, I'm right now. I'm just trying to decide which one I'm going to use. Uh, so I'll put this on before I cure the resin, as you'll see here.
And now I'm just put it, uh, putting the, uh, the little crystal on there. Uh, so it will actually just cure right into the resin. I don't need to use any additional glue for it. It'll stay there permanently. Here we are. What do you think? Are you gonna give it a try yourself? I hope you like my video and uh, hopefully I'll get some more out soon. Uh, and I hope you guys all have a great summer. And uh, again, thanks for watching.